Is IPv6 safe or not? Internet protocol addresses or IP addresses have been used to track us on the internet. Since the beginning of the internet, we have been using IP addresses in the version 4 format, IPv4. Every internet traffic is accompanied by this identifier. Many internet providers have now switched from IPv4 to IP version 6 or IPv6. For example, practically all phone networks in the USA use IPv6. I am testing a Starlink system and that uses IPv6. I made an IPv6 video a while ago talking about the risks of a fully implemented IPv6 internet. IPv6 is a mixed bag if fully implemented as originally spec'd out. There are parts of this that have some bad privacy implications. But some parts have also been corrected and made better since I made a video on this over two years ago. Looks like some privacy people got their fingers in there or maybe someone in the working group watched my IPv6 video. Unlikely, but you never know. Interestingly, IPv6 in its partially implemented state seems to serve as well at the moment. And this is the surprise. There's also the effect of a Starlink network, which is a different model from the usual wide internet. And this introduces different effects. With a few tweaks to your home network, you can ensure that your privacy isn't worsened by IPv6. In this video, I will explain how to make sure IPv6 is set to benefit you rather than use as a method to track your identity and location. Stay right there to learn about the facts. Today, every snippet of data that goes through the internet is identified by an IPv4 address, and that then is seen by the receiving site. This allows a website, for example, to record the IP address and thus identify the data sender. If a user is using their home Wi-Fi router, then the IP address is the one assigned by the ISP or cable company. And this is typically fixed over a long period of time. My router IP address hasn't changed in 20 years, for example. This is the reason that IP addresses are dangerous because they are such long-term identifiers on home networks. And this is also the reason why I always recommend a VPN or a VPN router. Now, what is different with using the IPv6 format? First of all, the primary driver of the push to IPv6 is that the world is running out of IP addresses. The IPv4 format allowed only 4 billion addressable internet devices. Just to compare here, the world makes 4 billion phones a year, each requiring an IP address on the internet. An IPv4 address looks like this. In this example, 192.168.0.1. In other words, four digits with values separated by dots. IPv6 is a much longer identifier with eight sets of hexadecimal digits like this, separated by colons. Each of the eight digits is a four-digit hexadecimal number with values ranging from 0 to 64K. An IPv6 address can have 3.4 times 10 to the 38 possibilities. So that should give us an unlimited supply of addresses for a long time. There's no denying that IPv4 addresses are a problem. In fact, often if you want more IPv4 addresses for your servers, you have to pay for them. The main problem with IPv6 addresses originally is that the way an IPv6 global address is structured can really identify precisely where you are and even identify specific devices on the internet. Currently in most homes using a Wi-Fi router, the internet IPv4 address terminates at the router. So each home only has one public IPv4 address. So everyone in your home appears to have the same IP address. Then the router generates another set of IP addresses for your home devices, but it uses a non-routable set of IP addresses. This way, all devices at your home do not use a public IPv4 address. This also offers a natural protection from internet attacks because devices using non-routable IPv4 addresses at your home cannot be reached from the internet. 
This natural protection is called a NAT, N-A-T. The network address translation or NAT feature in every router allows your devices to communicate to the internet in the outgoing direction, but it will not accept any unsolicited traffic incoming. You know you have a non-routable IP address if it is in the format 192.168.x.x or if the format is 10.x.x.x. Well, this is different with IPv6. I'm going to tell you the default IPv6 configuration with all of its flaws, but there is a way around these that I will get into after. With IPv6, every device has its own internet identifier. So basically, every device will potentially be reachable from the entire internet. This means that if you don't make moves like install a firewall in each device, each device can now be directly attacked in IPv6. Security cameras could be hacked and reached directly from the internet, for example. Next, the IP address format itself will reveal the location of the device. Unlike in IPv4 where the IP address itself did not have any organization, in IPv6, the prefix of the address actually indicates a specific route location. A device gets its prefix from the router it needs to access and that router gets its prefix from another upstream router. So the way this would have worked, it would be possible to map out the entire wired internet as an actual physical map. Then as originally implemented, the suffix portion of the IPv6 address is taken from the MAC address of the device. This was a really bad move. The MAC address can identify the device and device manufacturer and is a unique identity at the device level. If this is used, the privacy issues are horrendous. Fortunately, the MAC address used in the IPv6 address is no longer part of the standard. The privacy implications of a device level tracking on the internet with a permanent identifier is no longer a risk. I was complaining about this heavily in my original video a couple of years ago, but there's still a couple of concerns. The simplified location tracking built into IPv6 is a concern, and the ability to attack a device directly from the internet is the second concern. This leads me to describe the Starlink setup. I have Starlink and I'm testing it. I don't have an evaluation yet on the performance and speed of Starlink, but I can tell you that Starlink uses IPv6. Now I told you earlier that the problem with the prefix of IPv6 is that it reveals the wired architecture of the routers and could potentially identify precise locations since routers on LAN are in fixed places. So the organization of the IPv6 prefix will be predictable. But here's the interesting thing. The satellite approach is different. A satellite covers a very large area. So an IPv6 in Starlink will indicate the satellite's router address in the prefix. But it shouldn't in itself pinpoint a specific location since one satellite would theoretically handle a large number of devices over a large area. Thus, I actually don't fear that the IPv6 used in this context will provide an external party the ability to pinpoint a particular device location just from the IPv6 address. One of the largest uses of IPv6 today is with your mobile phones. If you have a cell service, go look in your phone settings and you will see an IPv6 address. In the USA, at least, phones are definitely using IPv6 when using your carrier's data plan. Now, just like the satellite example I just gave, the idea of generating a location from the IPv6 address here doesn't work either because a mobile device is mobile. So there's no fixed infrastructure to derive from the IPv6 address. You could figure out the tower location, but that would be the practical limit of information just based on the IP address itself. So basically, the risk of location privacy loss from IPv6 is no worse than IPv4 today if used in satellite or cell mode. 
That's one good news. Now, on the home network, it is still possible to identify a specific internet route and identify locations and access specific devices. But there's a way around this. The answer is to go to your Wi-Fi router settings and look in the IPv6 section, typically under some advanced configuration, and turn on link local only. Look for some term that implies turning on link local mode on IPv6. What this does is limit the IPv6 addressability to the router only. This would be the same capability it had with IPv4 using NAT. When a device using IPv6 wants to connect to the internet, it will send a broadcast asking a router to give it a prefix. Normally, a router will give a prefix that gives an internet route direct to the device. But when link local is enabled, the prefix will be a fixed one. It will be prefix FE80. I looked at my phone, for example, which is on T-Mobile, and I looked at the IP address assigned to the phone, and it starts with FE80. This means that my IPv6 assignment is in link local mode. Non-techie translation. My device is not reachable through the internet. No attacker outside of the assigned router at T-Mobile can connect to the device. So same thing with your home. If you enable link local, then your IPv6 ends at your router with the link local mode enabled. That solved the direct addressability from the internet issue. And today the suffix is typically decided by self-configuration. The device assigns itself its own IPv6 suffix and announces it on the local network. If no one else has the same IPv6 suffix, then it will be the identity used. Thus, it is now random rather than based on a dangerous MAC address. Today, IPv6 is only partially implemented. And likely, it will be implemented like this for many, many years to come. The main internet is still communicating using IPv4. This partial implementation is actually perfect for privacy. Amazingly, here's why. At the endpoint or the receiver of the internet traffic, for example, a website or some internet platform like a Facebook, it currently sees all traffic as IPv4. So going back to the typical DSL cable modem setup, your DSL modem will have the assigned IPv4 address which is typically a long-term identifier, as I mentioned before. This has been the bane of our existence on the internet since all external parties can see this IP address. If you're using Facebook inside your home, then that's the IP address seen by Facebook. This is why you use a VPN at your home all the time to hide this IP address. But let's say you used IPv6 at your DSL modem. Some modems are defaulting now to IPv6. Assuming you put a limitation on your Wi-Fi routers on IPv6 to use only link local mode, or if you force your Wi-Fi router to use only IPv4 inside your home network, then your devices will be safe from being accessed directly from the internet. Now what happens here? Well, your DSL modem will no longer have an IPv4 address in theory, I say in theory because most modems will have both an IPv6 and IPv4 address currently. But let's say that an ISP decides to route only using IPv6. Then the IPv4 address seen by the outside world will be the first gateway router that translates the IPv6 to IPv4 and that will be at the side of the ISP. That's the router that actually connects to the internet. In such a setup, potentially thousands of people will have the same IP address, which in essence is what a VPN is made to do. I don't believe we're here yet, but this partial implementation of IPv6 will actually be great. It will minimize the value of the IPv4 address in identifying a device. And as long as the IPv6 address of your router is not visible to the external site like a Facebook, then the information they get about you is limited to the router providing the internet gateway at the ISP. It would be great if this were a semi-permanent solution. 
Another privacy solution from the ISP side is if in the future there are direct IPv6 trunks for the majority of the internet, the ISP could set up their networks with linked local mode just like they do in cell service. That means that ISP's IPv6 addresses will not be part of the internet global address space. So if this is how IPv6 is going to be used, there are quite positive benefits. You still have to be careful to set your local Wi-Fi routers to work in link local mode itself. Otherwise, in theory, the ISP can still spy on you. So our saving grace is link local mode. If your IPv6 address starts with FE80, then you are utilizing a link local address. However, it is not obvious if this is your local router or the router of the ISP. So in summary, IPv6 is okay as long as the link local mode is active on the closest router to you, since you can chain link local mode. Or use IPv6 only from your router to the ISP, but your local networks are set to use only IPv4. That's fine too and will work with all devices today. So in summary, IPv6 as originally envisioned could have had extremely bad privacy implications. But the liberal use of link local mode would make IPv6 even safer than IPv4. In the future, when evaluating ISPs in IPv6, I would actually grade them based on their use of link local mode or an IP address starting in FE80. This would indicate to me that they are concerned about privacy. Kudos to the cell carriers using link local mode. Your support through this channel is greatly appreciated. I have several products for your consideration. There's the popular Brax2 privacy phone, a D Google phone, which is likely the safest way out of being tracked on mobile. I also have the Braxmail email service, which eliminates big tech from identifying you since this email emits no metadata. I also have the VPN service Bytes VPN to hide your IP address. All these are on my app Braxme. The link is in the description. Just sign up on the app and visit the store. Thank you for watching and see you next time.